Hello, my name is Luke and I'm here to show you the good stuff. Stuff that's going to help you make better music faster. I've been making music for many, many years for loads of different people in many different genres and I've been releasing my own song once every two weeks for the last two years. And so I'm all about trying to make songs quickly, efficiently and just be a music making machine, right? And I love starting new ideas, but I also hate not finishing songs. So I want to try finish a lot of songs where I can. And so I've got a really great little kind of trick little idea for you today is how to get massive sounding snares and I'm going to show you a song here this is mine it's called Flatline I'm going to show you uh, kind of the pre going into the chorus so you can take a listen to what the drums are doing and then I'm going to break down the snare sound in particular and show you how to get it sounding absolutely huge mongus Cool. So there you go. That is how the song sounds. I absolutely love this and I particularly love the snare sound there. Let me just solo the drum so you can hear the snare in context. So you can see it sounds absolutely awesome. So let's break down what's going on specifically with this snare sound. So the way that I like to do it is I like to start by layering up some snare sounds because this is how I can create my own unique snares here. And you can see if I turn this track on here, this is my original snare track. Let me turn off all the processing here and I'll show you the different samples that I've got. The first one is this snare here. This is a really tight sounding snare. I think I maybe picked this one up from Splice or something like that. Uh, wherever you source your samples from, it does not matter. It can be a recording from your phone. It can be from S Splice. It can be from your own samples that you have bought. I then laid it up with this snare sound here. And this is from an old Alesis drum kit like one of those vintage drum machines. And this has one of those massive classic sounding snare sounds. So this is a really good starting point here. Uh, I love the way that this sounds. So when you layer them up together, you get the crack of that tight snare and then you get the body of that drum machine snare. I then have just a couple of ghost note type snares, which are here. So this one just here is like a ghost note. It's kind of like a you know, what kind of happens between the two snares. We then have this snare roll here. Like that. If you want your drums to sound realistic, add in a snare roll there, especially if you're uh, playing around with electronic drums there. And so that is the snare kind of foundation. Let's break down the processing on this. The first thing that I did was add some EQ and compression. Now, I love the SSL EQ here from Slate. Uh, well, it's from SSL, but it's within the Slate bundle. Highly recommend it. It's only a few quid a month and you get all these professional plugins, which is insane to me. But what I did was I took out about two decibels at 400 hertz here, uh, or 0.4 kilohertz. That is because there was a bit of mud there, so I decided to clean that, clean that up. I took out a decibel and a half at around 2.8. To me, there was a bit of a, uh, like a frequency there that I didn't like. And then I boosted 1.6 decibels of everything above 8.8 .8 kilohertz just to give it a bit of clarity. But the main thing that's happening is this compressor section here, and in particular, this button here called peak, right? So let me just play you and you'll see what's kind of happening over here on the compressor. Pay attention to this. You see how that's been quite aggressive, compressing down to six, the peak, basically makes the compressor work faster whilst allowing whilst having a bit of a slower attack so that you got you get the peak of the transient coming through does that make sense so when you select the peak button you get the peak of the transient coming through which gives you so much um transient energy right it pokes through the mix i absolutely love this uh peak setting on drums and anything transient heavy i just think it adds so much um just just oh that sort of stuff. Do you know what I'm saying? So 
that's what I've got going on. And you can easily recreate that with a standard compressor just by having a kind of semi-slow attack. You still want it to be uh, quick, but not uh, super quick where it takes away the transient energy. And then a pretty fast release, which this one does at 0.33 there. You can see I've got it dialed in there. So that is basically giving me a lot of that energy that I'm looking for. Because I now have all that energy, the next thing that I want to add is some saturation. This is going to help tame that peak so that uh, I can basically turn up my snare, turn up my drums without worrying about clipping. And I'm using thermal here, but you can use any distortion or saturation of your choice. Any DAW has one. I'm using the Club Clipper setting and I've got about 75% there for my dry wet and my XY position is there. And this sounds like this. So you can already hear that it's actually taken away uh, the peak and it's just almost um, kind of uh, smoothening out the entire sound, right? And if I actually show you here, uh, have a look at my fader down here. If I turn off thermal, take a listen and watch how high this peaks. Yeah, we're sitting at minus 12. Let me turn on thermal. Yeah, there you go, 21. Look at that, minus 21. So we are taking away a bunch of volume, but without taking away the transient energy. This is why I love saturation after adding your transients. I'm then adding a bit of vowel hallet. And this here is a reverb. I'm using a non-linear reverb and I'm using, uh, it's basically to recreate a room sound. Take a listen. So it sounds like it's in a room. It's really, really tight. I've got it at the mix. I've got the mix at about 20% there. And that is just giving it some vibe and atmosphere. This is really crucial. I could just throw like a really large reverb on there to get the big sound, uh, but I need the ambience of the snare first. Um, if you record live drums, you'll know that to get the big sounding drums that you want, it kind of relies on the room, right? And so what we're doing here is recreating the room with a non-linear reverb. Once I've added that, I'm going to Neutron here and I'm just doing a bit of cleanup EQ, taking away the bottom end, uh, ducking down or doing some dynamic EQ at 430 hertz here, and then adding additional dynamic EQ, but going upwards instead uh, at 1.3 kilohertz here. Um, quite extreme. I'll show you what they're doing now. I just like the sort of crack and attack we've got at this frequency here, but didn't like the mud here, so we duck that out there. We then finish off with a bit of OTT. This is Slate's version, MOTT, uh, but if you have standard OTT, you can use that. It's also available to download for free. The original OTT plugin, uh, which I'll show you here, looks a bit like this. It's by X for Audio. Where is it? There it is. This is the original OTT, right? So you can download that for free. Uh, but I use MOTT because that comes in the Slate Digital Pack. And I've got that dialed in at 7.3%, very, very minimal, but it just does a bit of tone shaping for me and controlling the frequencies across these three bands. So once that, once that is on, I then bounce this in place. And then of course we get the snare sound that is down here that you can see. Let me just make the waveform a bit bigger. There we go. And now this is where I add the source of the reverb and I'll show you exactly what's going on here. I've rooted this track here to a bus and this bus is where I can add the reverbs and all the effects and then blend in however much I like. So I'm at a, let's have a look. I'm basically at 100% there with the bus rooting it. And then I'm just controlling the fader of the snare reverb just there. So let's break down what's going on on the snare verb. I'll just solo it and we'll break this down bit by bit. So we've got the original signal. My mistake, let me just do that. There we go. So not, what you're hearing is the dry signal that I've got here going through the bus. And the first thing that I'm adding is Valhalla reverb again. And I'm using the snare plate preset. Again, mix is 100% because I'm going to blend this bus in later. That sounds like this. You can hear it sounds massive and there's tons of frequency energy happening in the high end, in the low end. Uh, but that's what I wanted. I wanted all that to begin with. I'm then adding MOTT onto this. And you might not have done this before, but if you haven't, you should. The reason I'm doing this is because, let me just play it to you. Let 
what it's doing is it is clamping down on the initial impact of the frequency and then it's expanding the reverb. So as the reverb gets quieter, this compressor is making it louder. So even though it's the same reverb, it makes it sound bigger and louder. And the reverb is more kind of in the ear of the listener. That's why I love adding, that's why I added this effect onto the reverb. We then add a little bit of EQ here, and this is where I'm tidying it up a bit more. So I'll just play you what's going on. So I'm taking away the bottom end and the top end. You can hear that it's a way more dull sound, but that is completely okay. Taking away a little bit of this kind of high mid range here. Uh, I wanna leave that space clear for the snare. And that is basically all the processing. I did have a track spacer on here, um, and this originally was supposed to duck the reverb out of the way of the snare, but I didn't end up using it in the end, so that's redundant. Uh, but if I now add in the original snare, you'll hear how this sounds. You can hear that the reverb, even though it's, you know, it's 1.8 seconds, so it's pretty long, you can hear that it never, the tail end of it just never really dies down, and that is coming from that MOTT. Uh, from that compression so i definitely recommend you try that on your next song if you like this kind of stuff let me know down in the comments let me know how you get on with it like follow subscribe for more videos like this and hopefully i'll see you in the next one